high, the value of growing your people. I don't know how many people you have working for you, but let's assume for a moment that you have a team of more than one or two. If you've got a team of 10, if you've got a team of 50, if you've got a team of hundreds or even thousands of staff, if you've got a team of multiple people, growing them and improving them is going to be worth way more than just about anything else you can do. If you get 5 or 10% better out of every one of your 100 staff members, that adds up to an awful lot. So I'm just going to talk about three distinctions, three subtle points, but all pretty basic points. Three points around how you might ensure this happens, where you might focus, how can you extract this leverage, where you get all of your staff improving, growing, getting better, performing well, multiplying and giving your business the benefit that that will bring. So point number one just relates to time. Uh, it, for this to happen, it needs you to spend time on it. And I, and I want to make one distinction about the type of time. You need to spend time doing it. So whether that's time training your staff, giving them feedback, mentoring them, can take lots of different activities, which I'll come to in a moment. Absolutely, you need to spend the time doing that. It also takes time in planning it. If you've got a one-on-one -on -one coming up with someone, investing 15 minutes in thinking through, how do I best give this piece of feedback? What's the one area I'd most like this staff member to improve? Before a team meeting, thinking through, what is the outcome I really want to achieve in this meeting? How can I best do that? Actually planning it, not just having ad hoc random conversations about the latest fire, the most urgent thing, actually planning and being intentional about your interactions with your staff to get the best out of them and how you can grow and improve them. So that's point number one, spending enough time doing it and spending enough time planning the doing of it. The second thing I'd say uh, that's important in this regard is to be very broad in your mind about the different activities that get captured here. There are the obvious ones. If you're on a training session for your team, yep, that's going to improve them. Well, Hopefully it's going to improve them. Uh, running a training session will, of course, to improve them. But also giving some feedback to them, coaching them, mentoring them. These are all activities that are also going to do it. When you spend time delegating to them, empowering them, when you spend time talking about the vision for the business, when you spend time doing things that might motivate them, when you spend time building relationships within the team, maybe it's in a social event, maybe it's within the office meetings. There are so many activities that all can contribute. There are the obvious, again, it's your one-on-ones, it's your team meetings. But think broadly, look at all of the opportunities you have to motivate, improve, grow, get clear, help your staff be effective, help them perform brilliantly, help them grow and help them drive for even more in future. So point number one was about time. Point number two is, think widely, come up with lots of ways of doing it. The last point is to incorporate lots of questions in your planning and your delivery of it. Questions have been one, one, of, one of my favourite topics. I wrote a book about it, in fact, but in the end, your team will do their best when they're taking ownership of it, when they're coming up with a good deal of the ideas themselves, when they're developing their own clarity, when they're working out how to solve something, when they're creating that new innovation. The more that they own themselves, the more that they're self-directed, the more impressive they're going to be, the more productive they're going to be, the further they're going to grow. Now, that comes a little bit from them wanting to. Sometimes it's talking to them about their brightness of future, about where they're heading for in a year's time or two years' time, three years' time. Sometimes it's asking the right questions about how they're going to perform a certain task. Sometimes it's asking really effective, probing, open questions to get them thinking creatively, to get them recognising something, having a realisation that they have to have, becoming aware of something that perhaps they weren't aware of before. Perhaps it's them getting clearer on their strengths and helping them spend more time working to those strengths. These are all great areas to work with your team on. But if you've got the right questions to ask and they can then come up with the answers, come up with their realisations, come up with the innovation, their level of ownership and therefore their level of effectiveness is going to multiply. So those are my three things to get you thinking about. In the end, if you can get all of your staff, no matter how many there are, going up by 5%, 10%, 20%, in their productivity and their performance, multiply it together across the team. It's 
invaluable. It's about as valuable as, uh, as a way you can spend time. So think about the time you actually spend on it and plan to it. Be broad in your mind about how you can do it and incorporate questions. Get them, get your team coming up with it themselves, giving them ownership and enjoy the results you're going to see. All the best.